Did you know that spike proteins can linger in your body for weeks to months after a viral infection or vaccination, depending on the vaccine? Today we are going to address the taboo subject of spike proteins and their potential lingering effects on our health and the health of others. Detoxifying our bodies from these proteins is not just important, it's essential for our overall health and well-being. We are also going to discuss the difference between traditional vaccines and the most recent vaccine technology of mRNA and adenovector DNA. Additionally, we must consider the potential pathogenicity of the additives used to formulate vaccines such as the polyethylene glycol of the mRNA vaccines. There have been serious side effects from vaccines for decades. In fact, there were so many serious problems that in 1988, a federal law was passed that said, no vaccine manufacturer shall be liable in a civil action for damages arising from vaccine-related injury or death associated with the administration of any vaccine if the injury or death. Stop for a second and think about what that means. If you, your child or other loved one dies or is seriously disabled from the side effects of a vaccine, you are not entitled to sue the drug manufacturer for a loss of life or a lifetime of medical expenses that you will incur. I'm not aware of any other drug category that annoys such an exemption from liability. Understanding the potential risks associated with spike proteins is the first step towards a healthier body. First, we need a little background on vaccines. Traditional vaccines, mRNA vaccines and viral vector vaccines are three distinct types of vaccines that work in very different ways to allegedly help the body develop immunity against diseases. Traditional vaccines contain either weakened or inactivated forms of the virus or bacteria that causes the disease. These vaccines also contain additional components called adjuvants, which help boost the body's immune response to the vaccine. Synthetic mRNA vaccines, on the other hand, contain lipid nanoparticles that encapsulate a portion of the virus. These vaccines then rely on their ability to cause the human body to produce pathogenic spike proteins, causing an allergic response, so the vaccine basically causes your body to produce a virus that creates an autoimmune response, right? Well, there are over 80 known diseases that create autoimmune responses. A few include HIV and AIDS, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, type 1 diabetes, multiple sclerosis, and ulcerative colitis. This is my perspective. I have concerns about altering our bodies to create pathways of immunodeficiency. If you haven't seen my video about neuroplasticity, I suggest you watch it as a foundation to understanding how the body forges neurological pathways and learns. I don't want my body to learn how to manufacture allergens that my IT tries to destroy. The science of neuroplasticity highlights the importance for long-term studies as the body continues to learn from a behavior long after the drug is removed from the body. I'll put a link to the video on neuroplasticity at the end of this video. A second concern that some have with the mRNA vaccines is that they are supposed to stay close to the injection site and nearby lymph nodes. But the lipid nanoparticles distribute the virus throughout the body to areas very far from the injection site. This has caused concern that these nanoparticles, filled with viral fragments, can be distributed to fatty areas throughout the body, knowing that the brain has a lipid barrier. Once it penetrates those cells, spike proteins are created that attach to the exterior of cells. To clarify, Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 vaccines are the only two vaccine manufacturers to use lipid nanoparticles to protect the mRNA as it penetrates your cells. AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson use viral vector carriers to deliver the vaccine to the cells. Both of these types of vaccines do not contain spike protein but provide genetic information for the body to synthesize these spike proteins. In addition to the pathogenicity of the mRNA vaccines, the viral vector vaccines are produced in mammalian cell cultures, which presents additional risks for allergic responses and side effects. Animal experiments have shown that adenovirus vector DNA can remain detectable for months after inoculation, which is different from the rapidly degraded RNA which is removed weeks after administration. Putting aside any side effects and a person's inability to be compensated for damages, the spike proteins are pathogenic, meaning they can cause disease. So, what exactly are these spike proteins that vaccines cause our body to make, and why should we be concerned? Well, let's take a look at what we are dealing with. Spike proteins are a type of protein that play a crucial role in how some viruses, including the infamous coronavirus, enter our cells. They get their name from their shape, which resembles the spikes on a medieval mace. It's these very spikes that allow the virus to attach to our cells and gain entry, starting the infection process. So in a nutshell, the mRNA vaccines cause your body to produce spike proteins to which your body is allergic. 
The first thing I thought of is, what stops a body from overproducing these spike proteins, especially in immunocompromised patients such as patients on chemotherapy or prednisone-type steroids? This bothers me a lot, but let's explore a little deeper because the story doesn't end there. You see, spike proteins can also be produced in our bodies after receiving a traditional vaccination. These spike proteins are the entire foundation of allegedly producing immunity, but as I thought, too many spike proteins can be problematic. These proteins, whether from a virus or a vaccine, can linger in our bodies for weeks in the case of mRNA vaccines or months for the adenovirus vector DNA vaccines, even after the infection has cleared or the immune response has been triggered. This is where the potential risks come in. Research shows that an excess of these spike proteins may cause inflammation and damage to our cells, especially in the heart and blood vessels. This has now become evident by the many cases of cardiomyopathy and thrombosis that occurred from the use of the COVID-19 vaccines that were approved at warp speed. I found an article in Biomedicines dated August 2023, where researchers studied a condition of they named spikeopathy, which is the potential for disease from spike proteins. The study included autoimmune, cardiovascular, neurological, potential oncological effects, and autopsy evidence for spikeopathy. The article also cites statistics from the Australian state government health data from November and December 2022. The data clearly indicated that the more doses of vaccines correlated with more hospitalizations and deaths. Another concern is that the COVID-19 vaccines received expedited approval based on projections from Chinese mortalities of the original Wuhan virus, not on actual deaths, which have now shown that vaccines were not necessary, especially in those that were not elderly. AstraZeneca and Janssen adenovirus vector vaccines had a significantly increased risk of thrombotic events called vaccine-induced immune thrombotic thrombocytopenia, or VITT, which is believed to be related to formation of antibodies against platelet factor 4. The mRNA vaccines, on the other hand, have shown an increased rate of anaphylactic shock which is usually quite rare with other drugs. This may be due to the polyethylene glycol which has been used largely in pharmaceuticals. However, concerns have recently been expressed about its toxicity due to reports of seizures, tremors, acidosis, and renal failure. Now that we know why these proteins can be problematic, let's explore how to detoxify our bodies from them. Science offers us a number of ways to detoxify our bodies from spike proteins. Spike proteins, these tiny invaders, can persist in our bodies, potentially causing a variety of health issues. But fear not, science has our back, offering a range of detoxification methods. Let's dive into some of these, shall we? There are drugs that remove spike proteins including ritonavir, an antiviral drug, azithromycin, an antibiotic, and chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine anti-malarial drugs. The literature also lists remdesivir, which I don't recommend due to serious side effects. We also have certain treatments and procedures such as therapeutic plasma exchange, a procedure where the plasma in your blood is replaced with fresh plasma or a plasma substitute. This process can help to remove spike proteins from the bloodstream, giving your body a fresh start. Then there's chelation therapy, a treatment usually used to eliminate heavy metals from the body. It involves the administration of chelating agents that bind to spike proteins, making them easier for the body to eliminate. Think of it like a magnet, attracting and pulling out those unwanted spike proteins. Unfortunately, these methods are not without risks and potential side effects, so it's important to weigh up the benefits and drawbacks with a doctor familiar with spike proteins. While these scientific methods can be very effective, there are also many natural ways to detoxify our bodies. So, stay tuned as we delve into these natural detoxification strategies in the next part of our guide. Nature provides us with an abundance of resources to cleanse our bodies. One of the most powerful ways to naturally detoxify from spike proteins is through the foods we eat. Moreover, there are certain dietary changes and supplements that can support these detoxification processes. For instance, certain antioxidants like vitamin C and E can help to neutralize the harmful effects of spike proteins. Consuming a diet rich in these nutrients can provide an additional line of defense. Certain foods are rich in antioxidants and anti-inflammatory compounds that help our bodies eliminate harmful substances. Start by incorporating more fruits and vegetables into your diet. Leafy greens like spinach and kale, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower, and vibrant berries are all packed with essential nutrients that boost our body's natural detoxification processes. Citrus fruits, rich in vitamin C, 
are particularly effective as they help to strengthen the immune system and flush out toxins. In addition to fruits and vegetables, certain spices and herbs can also aid in detoxification. For instance, turmeric, known for its potent anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties, can help cleanse the liver, a key organ involved in detoxification. Similarly, ginger can help improve digestion and eliminate toxins from the body. Next, consider natural supplements that aid in detoxification. One such supplement is activated charcoal, which can bind to toxins and help remove them from the body. Other useful supplements include milk thistle, known for its liver-protecting properties, and spirulina, a type of blue-green algae that has powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. Hydration is another crucial part of natural detoxification. Drinking plenty of water aids in flushing out toxins once they are released from the fat cells which they may be stored within. You can also consider herbal teas like green tea or dandelion tea, both of which have detoxifying properties. Finally, don't forget the role of lifestyle changes in detoxification. Exercise can play an important factor in the spike protein detoxification process because fat breakdown can expedite removal due to the lipid distribution system of the mRNA vaccines, so I would exercise. Adequate sleep and stress management techniques like meditation or yoga can all support your body's natural detox processes. By integrating these natural methods into our daily lives, we can support our body's natural cleansing processes. Detoxifying our bodies from spike proteins is a crucial part of maintaining our health. We've covered a lot of ground today, from understanding the potential risks associated with spike proteins, to exploring both scientific and natural methods for detoxification. Whether it's through specific foods, supplements, or lifestyle changes, there are numerous ways to give your body the support it needs to cleanse itself from these proteins. Remember, the most effective strategies are those that are evidence-based and tailored to your unique needs. Regular detoxification isn't just about removing spike proteins, it's about supporting your body's natural cleansing processes, promoting overall well-being, and taking proactive steps towards a healthier you. So let's start a conversation. Have you tried any of these detoxification methods? What were your experiences? Remember, your health is in your hands. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe for more health-related content, and share your experiences with detoxification in the comments below.